In the last video, I showed you how to set up your first model. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, do a basic causal model like this one and interpret it. So in this model, we are saying that uh, computer self-efficacy predicts skill acquisition and innovativeness. And innovativeness predicts skill acquisition. And we're also saying that each of these um, factors is comprised of several indicators. For now, let's just interpret the causal model, uh, this inner model here. So you can go to calculate, and there are several different options for calculation. If you just want the regression weights, click on PLS algorithm. Um, the consistent PLS algorithm gets rid of some biases. Uh, you can read more about it. If uh, I can show you, when you click on this, there is a read more button. Click on that and you can read more about what it means to do the consistent PLS. If instead you want to do uh, bootstrapping or consistent bootstrapping, um, that will produce T statistics that um, give you confidence intervals and a level of significance for each of the paths. I'm not going to talk about all of these others. There's a lot of, uh, of other things. There are a lot of other things you can do. Um, but I'm going to focus this video on just the PLS consistent and consistent bootstrapping. So let's start with the PLS consistent. I'm going to zoom out here. Um, a few different options we have here. Um, connect all latent variables for initial calculation. Uh, no, not in this one. Partial least squares. Uh, am I going to do a path analysis or a factor analysis? So in this one, I'm just doing a path analysis. I'm analyzing the the causal paths. If I were doing a factor analysis as my primary uh, focus, I would change this to factor. How many times do I want to iterate? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are books and articles that say minimum of a thousand, uh, others say minimum of two thousand or five thousand. I'll put a thousand for now. Um, don't worry about these other options here. Missing values. If we have missing values, what do we want to do with them? Uh, we don't have any missing values. Oh, it says I do. 216 missing values. Interesting. Um, I'll have to analyze that another time. So what do we want to do with it? We can do mean replacement. I'm going to do uh, case-wise deletion, which uh, just gets rid of that case. And then waiting. Don't worry about waiting in this case. When it's done, do we want to um, leave the calculation dialog open, this thing, close this and just look at the model or look at uh, the output? For now, I'm going to close this and just look at the model and start. Let me zoom out. Okay, it ran. And now you can see the path weights are in here. Again, I'm not going to look at these outer weights here, these um, factor loadings. I'm just going to look at the relationships between variables for now. Notice that uh, CSE has a fairly strong uh, effect on innovativeness. Uh, you can see if you hover over and, and an endogenous variable, something that is predicted, uh, you'll get the R square value, but it's also put in the center of it. Notice uh, 0.259 is in both places there. Um, so a fairly good uh, R square. Same with over here, good R square at 28%, almost 29%, and a strong regression weight of 0.513. Very little effect going on here. I would have to say that the effect computer self-efficacy has on skill acquisition is most likely mediated through innovativeness. We'll analyze that in a subsequent video. Now the question is, are these effects significant? So if I were to go to the report, which has been uh, generated right here on the left, instead of indicators showing their calculation results, um, I can click on the report and it shows up in here and I can look at the path coefficients in a matrix form that's probably a little easier to read um, and these are just the coefficients uh, just like before 513509.041 question is are they significant I don't know we'll have to do a bootstrap to tell there are a lot of things down here you can examine um, the indirect effects were calculated the total effects I will look at indirect effects when we look at mediation um, the latent variables uh, their scores the model fit uh, which is new. This is new to Smart PLS 3. Collinearity diagnostics. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this really quick. This will tell me about the VIFs, see if there are collinearity issues. So if I zoom out, we want VIFs less than, well, depends on who you read, 
but less than three is a pretty good indication there's nothing going on and we definitely have less than three here uh, less than five is also considered okay and depending on who you read you can actually get up to ten um, so we're not worried at all let me zoom out again uh, what else do we have down here we have the f square that's the uh, effect size I'm not going to talk about that in this video um, and then some other uh, more factor analysis related items pretty cool uh, let me look at model fit real quick that is new uh, it provides for you the SRMR which should be less than 0.08 in this case it is just above 0.08 so we might have some issues um, and let's call that good for now let's do this let's go ahead and run the PLS bootstrapping um, to get significance values so up here in calculate instead of choosing the PLS algorithm I'm going to choose the bootstrapping let's do that and as before there are several options uh, you can go through in the bootstrapping I'm going to do 500 subsamples eh, I'll bump that up to a thousand again one zero zero and that should be good everything else I'm going to leave the same and let's start calculation it's gonna think about it for a while you can see here it is calculating it is way faster than smart PLS 2 um, way way faster they figured out some good efficiencies in their algorithms now notice instead of path weights I now have T statistics if we're looking at two-tailed T statistics anything roughly above 1.96 uh, absolute value would be considered significant at the 95 percent confidence level so you can see that those two path weights that I had here that were point what was it 509 and 513 or something like that uh, those are definitely significant I have a T statistic of 8 and 7 uh, quite significant there um, whereas that small path loading we had before um, it was at 0 0.041 I believe uh, that is not significant that is far less than a 1.96 T statistic now when you bootstrap you get a lot of other information as well so if I go to the report here um, notice in the matrix we now get the um, standard deviation T statistics and p-values uh, here are the p-values which also is new for smart PLS 3 they didn't have that in smart PLS 2 um, so it's to show you that yes indeed that T statistic is significant um, in both of these cases you can also look at the bias corrected bias corrected confidence intervals here I'm not going to talk about those but uh, they are here you can also look uh, there are additional options down here that we didn't have before um, I'm not going to talk about that yet that'll be in my model fit video um, all of this oh, the R square adjusted produces an adjusted value um, and here are those R squares uh, you want to look at these right here let's see you want to look at uh, the sample mean in those cases that's across all the bootstrapped uh, estimations oh it even has a p-value for those R squares to show, tell you if those R squares are meaningful wow cool um, p-value for an R square that's pretty cool is there anything else I think that's it excellent um, in a subsequent video I will talk about some of these other things here Okay.